Chapter 1. The Lovelock Legacy The story of America's hidden giants begins with a captivating legend passed down through generations of the Paiute people. This Native American tribe, who settled in the Nevada desert thousands of years ago, told of a race of red-haired giants called the Saitka. These weren't just tall humans, but formidable beings standing between 8 and 10 feet tall, with fiery red hair and a reputation for cannibalism. According to Paiute oral history, the Saitka arrived in Nevada thousands of years ago, building rafts from the strong tule reeds found in local swamps. The name Saitka itself means tule eaters, referencing their dietary habits. However, their appetite wasn't limited to plants. The legends speak of the Saitka as fearsome warriors who frequently battled with the Paiute and neighboring tribes, often consuming their captives. For years, this conflict raged until the human tribes united against their common enemy. In a final, decisive battle, the remaining Saitka were driven into a cave. The allied tribes, seeing an opportunity to end the threat once and for all, stuffed the cave entrance with brush and set it ablaze. The giants inside either suffocated or burned alive, marking the end of their reign of terror. This tale might have remained just another intriguing piece of folklore if not for the curiosity of John T. Reed, a mining engineer who heard the story in 1886. Intrigued by the possibility that there might be truth behind the legend, Reed sought out the cave mentioned in the Paiute accounts. While he wasn't able to finance an excavation at the time, his interest sparked a chain of events that would lead to one of the most controversial archaeological discoveries in American history. The cave, which came to be known as Lovelock Cave, remained undisturbed until 1911 when two miners, James Hart and David Pugh, began digging for back guano to use in manufacturing gunpowder and fertilizer. As they dug, they encountered numerous artifacts, prompting formal archaeological excavations in 1912 and again in 1924. The findings from these excavations were nothing short of extraordinary. Archaeologists unearthed over 10,000 artifacts, including tools, baskets, weapons, and perhaps most intriguingly, human remains. At the cave entrance, there was evidence of intense burning, corroborating the Paiute account of the final battle. Inside, researchers found a giant handprint on one of the walls, far larger than what would be expected from a normal-sized human. Among the most startling discoveries were two mummified remains, a female measuring nearly seven feet tall and a male close to nine feet in height. Both had the distinctive red hair described in the Paiute legends. Other noteworthy finds included a sandal that would have fit someone wearing a size 29 shoe, suggesting a height of well over 8 feet, and clothing far too large for average-sized humans. These discoveries seemed to provide tangible evidence supporting the Paiute oral tradition. However, as news of the finds spread, so did controversy. The idea of a race of giants in ancient America challenged established views of prehistory and human evolution. Some researchers embraced the findings as groundbreaking, while others dismissed them as exaggerations or misinterpretations. The Lovelock Cave discoveries ignited a fierce debate in the archaeological community. Supporters pointed to the physical evidence and its remarkable correlation with Native American legends as proof of the giants' existence. Skeptics argued that the remains could be explained by known medical conditions causing excessive growth, or that the measurements had been exaggerated. Adding to the intrigue, many of the artifacts and remains from Lovelock Cave were reportedly sent to the Smithsonian Institution for further study. However, in the years that followed, these items seemed to vanish from the public record, fueling speculation about a potential cover-up. The legacy of Lovelock Cave extends far beyond its immediate archaeological significance. It opened the door to a broader questioning of accepted prehistoric narratives and sparked a renewed interest in Native American oral histories as potential sources of factual information. The controversy surrounding the discoveries also highlighted the often contentious relationship between mainstream archaeology and findings that challenge established paradigms. Today, Lovelock Cave stands as a testament to the complex interplay between legend, archaeology, and the ongoing search for truth about our ancient past. While the debate over the existence of giants in ancient America continues, the cave and its artifacts remind us that history is often more mysterious and multifaceted than we might assume. The story of the Saitka and the Lovelock Cave discovery serves as a compelling introduction to the broader narrative of hidden giants in America's forgotten history. Chapter 2 Giants in Ancient Law 
The concept of giants is not unique to the Paiute legend or to North American folklore. Throughout human history, across diverse cultures and religious traditions, stories of enormous humanoid beings have captured the imagination and shaped belief systems. These accounts, found in ancient texts, oral traditions, and religious scriptures, suggest that the idea of giants is deeply rooted in our collective consciousness. In the religious texts, giants feature prominently in several traditions. The Old Testament of the Bible, a cornerstone of Judeo-Christian belief, contains multiple references to giants. Perhaps the most well-known of these are the Nephilim, mentioned in the book of Genesis. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Genesis 6 verse 4, King James Version. This cryptic passage has been the subject of extensive theological and scholarly debate. Some interpretations suggest that the Nephilim were the offspring of fallen angels and human women, explaining their extraordinary size and strength. The Nephilim are often associated with the period before the Great Flood, linking them to ideas of divine punishment and the reshaping of the world. Another famous biblical giant is Goliath, the Philistine warrior defeated by the young David in one of the Bible's most iconic stories. Goliath is described as being between 7 and 11 feet tall, depending on the translation. This tale of David versus Goliath has become a cultural touchstone, symbolizing the triumph of the underdog against seemingly insurmountable odds. The Book of Enoch, an ancient Jewish religious text found among the Dead Sea Scrolls but not included in most biblical canons, provides even more detailed accounts of giants. It elaborates on the story of the Nephilim, describing them as the children of angels who taught humans forbidden knowledge and brought corruption to the earth. Moving beyond the Judeo-Christian tradition, we find references to giants in numerous other cultures. In Greek mythology, the Gigantes were a race of great strength and aggression, born from the blood of the castrated god Uranus. These beings fought against the Olympian gods in a conflict known as the Gigantomachy, which was a popular subject in ancient Greek art and literature. Norse mythology also features giants prominently. The Jotna, often translated as a giants or devourers, were a race of beings who often came into conflict with the gods. Despite their fearsome reputation, some Jotna, like the wise Mimi, were respected for their knowledge and power. In Hindu mythology, the Vedas speak of a time called the Satya Yuga or Golden Age when humanity existed in complete harmony. During this era, humans were believed to be of extraordinary size, with some accounts suggesting heights of up to 32 feet. This concept of a past age of giants aligns with similar ideas found in other cultures, hinting at a widespread belief in a time when the world and its inhabitants were larger than life. Ancient Sumerian texts provide some of the most intriguing accounts of giant beings. The Anunnaki, often described as a race of deities, are sometimes portrayed as giants in comparison to humans. According to some interpretations of Sumerian mythology, particularly those popularized by authors like Zecharia Sitchin, the Anunnaki were extraterrestrial beings who came to Earth in search of resources, particularly gold. In Sitching's controversial theories, the Anunnaki created humans through genetic engineering, combining their own DNA with that of existing hominids. This narrative attempts to explain both the existence of giants in ancient lore and the seemingly rapid development of human civilization. While these ideas are rejected by mainstream archaeology and biology, they have gained a significant following in alternative history circles. The persistence of giant narratives across cultures raises intriguing questions. Are these stories merely the product of human imagination, attempts to explain natural phenomena or to create larger-than-life heroes and villains? Or could they be distorted memories of actual beings that once walked the earth? Chapter 3 Coast to Coast, Giant Discoveries Across America The story of giant discoveries in America is not confined to a single location or time period. From the eastern seaboard to the Pacific coast, reports of oversized human remains and artifacts have emerged over the past two centuries, painting a picture of a potentially forgotten chapter in North American prehistory. These findings, scattered across the continent, have both intrigued and puzzled researchers, challenging conventional views of ancient American populations. One of the most significant concentrations of giant-related discoveries has been in the Ohio River Valley, particularly around the famous Serpent Mound. 
This 1,370-foot-long prehistoric effigy mound, located in Adams County, Ohio, has long been a source of fascination for archaeologists and alternative researchers alike. The purpose of the mound remains a mystery, but its location, near a meteor impact crater, has led some to speculate about its potential connection to astronomical events or even extraterrestrial influences. In 1872, a startling discovery was reported near the Serpent Mound. According to the historical collections of Noble County, Ohio, three enormous skeletons were unearthed, estimated to have been at least eight feet tall in life. What made these remains particularly unusual was the reported presence of double rows of teeth in both the upper and lower jaws. Unfortunately, upon exposure to the air, the skeletons allegedly crumbled, leaving no physical evidence for later examination. This was not an isolated incident. In 1891, E. Ralston Goldsboro, a respected antiquarian, published an account of giant skeleton discoveries in the Adena Culture Mounds of the Upper Ohio Valley. According to Goldsboro, gigantic human skeletons measuring over seven feet tall were commonly found in these ancient burial mounds. Further supporting these claims, in 1897, the Worthington Advance newspaper reported on the Smithsonian Institution's work on mounds in Iowa. The article quoted John Wesley Powell, then director of the Bureau of Ethnology, acknowledging the discovery of a skeleton measuring 7 feet 6 inches tall. Powell noted that the bones turned to dust upon exposure to air, a common theme in many giant skeleton reports. Moving westward, the Mississippi River Valley has also been a hotbed of giant-related discoveries. In 1868, near the shores of the Mississippi in Minnesota, quarry workers reportedly uncovered the remains of a 10-foot-tall skeleton. This finding caused quite a stir, but like many similar discoveries, the remains seem to have vanished shortly after their unearthing. In Missouri, the Ozark region has yielded its own giant tales. The Steelville Ledger, in its June 11, 1933 edition, reported the discovery of an 8-foot skeleton near Steelville. According to the article, the remains were examined by a local doctor and put on public display, causing a sensation in the small town. As we move further west, the reports continue. In San Diego, California, a giant skeleton measuring 8 feet for inches was reportedly found in 1895. The find was said to have been carefully inspected by Professor Thomas Wilson, an anthropologist from the Smithsonian Institution. Perhaps one of the most extensive collections of oversized remains was reported from Catalina Island, off the coast of Southern California. Amateur archaeologist Ralph Glidden claimed to have found a total of 3,781 skeletons on the Channel Islands between 1919 and 1928. Many of these, according to Glidden, were of unusually large stature, with some purportedly reaching heights of 9 feet or more. These discoveries, spanning the breadth of the continent, present a puzzling picture. If genuine, they suggest the presence of an unknown population of exceptionally tall individuals in ancient America. However, the lack of preserved physical evidence and the often sensationalized nature of the reports have led many mainstream archaeologists to dismiss these findings as exaggerations, misidentifications, or outright hoaxes. It's important to note that not all of these discoveries were made by amateurs or reported only in local newspapers. Some, like the findings examined by Smithsonian anthropologist Thomas Wilson, involved credentialed scientists. This adds an extra layer of intrigue to the story, raising questions about why such potentially groundbreaking discoveries didn't lead to a shift in our understanding of ancient American populations. The geographic spread of these discoveries is also noteworthy. While many are concentrated in the Ohio River Valley and the Mississippi River Valley, both areas known for their rich archaeological heritage and numerous ancient mounds, reports come from as far west as California. This widespread distribution challenges the idea that these findings could all be attributed to a single misidentified population or a localized series of hoaxes. Some researchers have attempted to correlate these discoveries with Native American legends of giants. Many tribes across North America have stories of ancient races of large, often hostile beings that their ancestors encountered. The Paiute tale of the Saika is just one example, similar legends exist among the Choctaw, the Comanche, and numerous other tribes. However, the scientific community remains skeptical. There are several reasons for this skepticism. 1. Lack of physical evidence, despite the numerous reports, 
there are no verifiable giant skeletons in any museum or university collection. This absence of physical evidence is often explained away in the reports by claims that the bones crumbled upon exposure to air, but this convenient disintegration raises suspicions. 2. Biological implausibility. As discussed in a previous chapter, there are significant biological limitations on how large a humanoid being can grow while remaining functional. The square cube law dictates that as an object grows in size, its volume increases faster than its surface area, leading to structural issues. For a human-like being to reach heights of 8 to 10 feet or more, they would need significantly different bone structure and musculature than modern humans. 3. Lack of supporting archaeological context. If a race of giants existed in ancient America, we would expect to find other evidence of their presence, oversized tools, larger doorways in ancient structures, bigger weapons, etc. Such evidence has not been forthcoming. For historical context, many of these discoveries were reported in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, a time when hoaxes and sensationalized newspaper stories were common. The Cardiff Giant Hoax of 1869, where a 10-foot-tall petrified man was discovered in New York, later revealed to be a carved gypsum statue, had primed the public's interest in giant discoveries. Despite these valid criticisms, proponents of the giant theory argue that the sheer number and geographic spread of these reports suggest there might be some truth to the stories. They point out that absence of evidence is not evidence of absence, and that the lack of preserved specimens could be due to mishandling, deliberate suppression, or genuine degradation of the remains over time. Some researchers have attempted to find alternative explanations for these reports that don't rely on the existence of a race of giants. One theory suggests that some of these discoveries might have been misidentified remains of extinct megafauna. The bones of mammoths, mastodons, or other large prehistoric animals could potentially be mistaken for human remains by untrained observers, especially if only partially excavated. Another possibility is that some of these giant skeletons were actually the remains of individuals with medical conditions like acromegaly or Marfan syndrome, which can result in unusual height and bone structure. In an era before these conditions were well understood, such remains might have been interpreted as evidence of a distinct race of giants. The controversy surrounding these discoveries has led to accusations of cover-ups and suppression of evidence, particularly directed at institutions like the Smithsonian. These claims allege that giant skeletons and artifacts were deliberately hidden or destroyed to maintain the prevailing narrative of human evolution and prehistoric population movements in the Americas. While such claims are difficult to prove or disprove, they highlight the tension between mainstream archaeological orthodoxy and alternative interpretations of prehistory. This conflict is not unique to the subject of giants, similar debates have raged over other controversial topics in archaeology, such as the possibility of pre-Columbian transoceanic contact between the old and new worlds. The story of giant discoveries across America serves as a fascinating case study in the complex relationship between physical evidence, oral tradition, and the construction of historical narratives. It raises important questions about how we interpret archaeological findings, the role of institutional authority in shaping our understanding of the past, and the potential value of folklore and oral histories as sources of historical information. Chapter 4. The Smithsonian Connection The Smithsonian Institution, founded in 1846 for the increase and diffusion of knowledge, has long been at the forefront of archaeological research in the United States. As the nation's premier museum and research complex, the Smithsonian has played a crucial role in shaping our understanding of American prehistory. However, its involvement in the story of giant discoveries in America is complex and controversial, marked by allegations of cover-ups and shifting scientific paradigms. Throughout the late 19th and early 20th centuries, numerous reports emerged of giant skeletal remains being sent to the Smithsonian for analysis and preservation. These accounts appeared in local newspapers, personal correspondence, and even some scientific publications of the time. For instance, the aforementioned statement by John Wesley Powell, then director of the Bureau of Ethnology at the Smithsonian, acknowledging the discovery of a 7-foot 6-inch skeleton in an Iowa mound, lent credibility to the idea that the institution was actively involved in investigating these unusual finds. However, a significant shift in archaeological thinking occurred during this period, which had profound implications for how such discoveries were interpreted and presented to the public. 
This shift involved the transition from diffusionism to isolationism in explaining the development of ancient American cultures. Diffusionism, which held sway in the early days of American archaeology, posited that cultural innovations and population movements could occur over long distances, potentially even across oceans. This theory was more open to the idea of outside influences shaping ancient American societies and could potentially accommodate concepts like a race of giants or advanced civilizations predating known Native American cultures. John Wesley Powell, despite his acknowledgement of giant skeleton discoveries, was instrumental in promoting a shift towards isolationism. This new paradigm emphasized the independent development of Native American cultures, minimizing or rejecting the possibility of significant outside influences, especially from across the oceans. Isolationism became the dominant view in American archaeology by the early 20th century, shaping how evidence was interpreted and which findings were considered worthy of serious study. This shift in thinking coincided with a noticeable decrease in reports of giant skeleton discoveries being acknowledged or preserved by the Smithsonian. This has led some researchers and alternative historians to speculate about a deliberate suppression of evidence that didn't fit the new isolationist narrative. One of the most intriguing cases that fuels these suspicions involves the discovery of ancient wooden coffins in Crump's Cave, Alabama, in 1892. The coffins, along with other artifacts, were reportedly sent to the Smithsonian. However, when researcher Frederick J. Pohl inquired about them in 1950, he received a puzzling response from the institution, we have not been able to find the specimens in our collections, though records show that they were received. This case is particularly significant because the use of coffins was not a known practice among pre-Columbian Native American cultures in North America. If genuine, these artifacts could have profound implications for our understanding of ancient American funeral practices and possibly suggest outside influences. The controversy deepened when another researcher, David Barron, followed up on this inquiry in 1992. He was told that the items were actually wooden troughs, not coffins. When Barron pointed out that troughs would be anachronistic in pre-Columbian America, as they were typically used for feeding livestock introduced by Europeans, he was informed that the artifacts were in a warehouse that was contaminated with asbestos and closed for cleanup, a process that would allegedly take 10 years. These inconsistencies and apparent evasions have fueled speculation about a systematic cover-up by the Smithsonian. Proponents of this theory argue that evidence challenging the established narrative of American prehistory has been deliberately hidden or destroyed to maintain the status quo in archaeology. Nevertheless, the persistent allegations of cover-ups have had a significant impact on public perception of the Smithsonian and mainstream archaeology in general. They have contributed to a growing alternative archaeology movement, which seeks to challenge established narratives and explore possibilities that lie outside the academic consensus. The Smithsonian's role in this controversy is further complicated by its unique legal status. As mentioned in a previous chapter, the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act of 1990 requires federal agencies to return Native American cultural items, including human remains, to tribes upon request. However, the Smithsonian is specifically exempted from this law. This exemption has raised questions about the institution's accountability and its control over potentially sensitive archaeological evidence. Critics argue that this allows the Smithsonian to maintain possession of controversial artifacts without external oversight, potentially enabling the suppression of evidence that challenges mainstream archaeological theories. Defenders of the Smithsonian argue that its exemption from NAGPRA is necessary to preserve important scientific collections and maintain the integrity of ongoing research. They contend that the institution's peer-reviewed research and public educational mission ensure transparency and scientific rigor. The debate over the Smithsonian's role in the giant skeleton controversy reflects broader tensions in the field of archaeology. On one side are those who advocate for strict adherence to established scientific methodologies and peer-reviewed research. On the other are those who argue that this approach can become dogmatic, potentially overlooking or dismissing evidence that doesn't fit prevailing theories. This conflict is not unique to the study of giants in ancient America. Similar debates have erupted over other controversial topics in archaeology, such as the possibility of pre-Columbian transoceanic contact or the age and sophistication of ancient civilizations. In each case, the challenge lies in balancing open-minded exploration of new possibilities with rigorous scientific standards and evidence-based conclusions. Chapter 5 
debunking the myths. While the tales of giant skeletons and advanced ancient civilizations in America are undoubtedly fascinating, it's crucial to approach these claims with a critical eye. In this chapter, we'll explore some of the reasons why mainstream archaeology remains skeptical of these extraordinary assertions, examining known hoaxes, scientific explanations for unusual human size, and the biological limitations on giant humanoids. One of the most famous hoaxes related to giant discoveries was the Cardiff Giant. In 1869, workers digging a well in Cardiff, New York, unearthed what appeared to be a 10-foot-tall petrified man. The discovery created a sensation, with people flocking from far and wide to see the giant. However, it was soon revealed to be an elaborate hoax orchestrated by a New York tobacconist named George Hull. Hull had commissioned a sculptor to carve the figure from a block of gypsum, which was then buried and he discovered as part of the scheme. The Cardiff giant hoax is significant not just for its audacity, but for how it primed the public's imagination for similar discoveries. In the decades that followed, numerous reports of giant skeleton finds emerged across America. While some of these may have been genuine misidentifications or exaggerations, others were likely inspired by the success of the Cardiff giant in capturing public attention and potentially turning a profit. Another notable case of misrepresentation involves the discoveries on Catalina Island by amateur archaeologist Ralph Glidden. While Glidden claimed to have unearthed thousands of giant skeletons, later investigation revealed that he had greatly exaggerated his findings and even staged photographs to make normal-sized skeletons appear larger. Glidden's motivations appear to have been primarily financial, as he used his sensational claims to secure funding for further excavations and to attract tourists to his makeshift museum. These high-profile hoaxes and misrepresentations have understandably made professional archaeologists wary of extraordinary claims about giant skeletons. However, skepticism about giants isn't based solely on past frauds. There are also solid scientific reasons to doubt the existence of a race of humanoid giants. One of the primary scientific arguments against the existence of giants comes from the field of biology, specifically the square cube law. This principle states that as an object grows in size, its volume increases much faster than its surface area. For a biological entity like a human, this poses significant problems as size increases. For example, if a human were to double in height while maintaining the same proportions, their weight would increase eightfold, but the cross-sectional area of their bones and muscles would only increase fourfold. This means that the skeleton and musculature would be under far greater strain, potentially to the point of failure. A human-like being standing 12 feet tall would need to have bones and muscles proportionally much thicker than a normal human to support their weight, resulting in a body shape very different from our own. Furthermore, other biological systems would face similar scaling issues. The heart would need to work much harder to pump blood throughout a larger body, potentially leading to early heart failure. The increased distance between the heart and the brain would make maintaining adequate blood flow to the brain challenging, potentially leading to frequent fainting or other cardiovascular issues. These biological limitations don't mean that exceptionally tall humans can't exist, but they do place upper limits on how large a human-like being could grow while remaining functional. Modern medical records show that the tallest verified human in history was Robert Wadlow, who reached a height of 8 feet 11.1 inches 2.72 meters. However, Wadlow suffered from numerous health problems related to his size and died at the young age of 22. So how do we explain the numerous reports of giant skeletons, some allegedly reaching heights of 12 feet or more? There are several possible explanations. 1. Misidentification. In some cases, the bones of extinct megafauna like mammoths or mastodons might have been mistaken for human remains, especially if only partially excavated or if examined by individuals without proper training in anatomy. 2. Exaggeration. The excitement of an unusual discovery, combined with the limitations of 19th century measuring techniques, could have led to overestimation of skeleton sizes in some cases. 3. Pathological conditions, some reported a giant skeletons might have been the remains of individuals with medical conditions like acromegaly or Marfan syndrome, which can result in unusual height and bone structure. 4. Cultural practices, some Native American tribes practice skull elongation, which could make a skeleton appear larger than it actually was if measured from the top of the elongated skull to the feet. 5. 
deliberate fraud, as demonstrated by cases like the Cardiff giant and Ralph Glidden's exaggerations, some reports were likely deliberate attempts to deceive for financial gain or notoriety. It's also worth noting that while individual cases of exceptionally tall humans do occur, there's no evidence of a distinct population or race of giants ever existing. Human height is influenced by a complex interplay of genetic and environmental factors, and while average heights can vary between populations, the differences are generally on the scale of inches, not feet. The persistence of giant myths despite these scientific arguments speaks to the power of these stories in capturing the human imagination. Tales of giants tap into our fascination with the extraordinary and our desire to uncover hidden histories. They also often align with narratives of lost advanced civilizations or ancient extraterrestrial visitors, ideas that have gained traction in popular culture despite lacking scientific support. Chapter 6, Beyond Giants, Evidence of Ancient Contact The search for evidence of giant humans in ancient America opens up a broader discussion about the possibility of pre-Columbian transoceanic contact between the Americas and other parts of the world. The Sweet Potato Mystery one of the most intriguing pieces of evidence for ancient transoceanic contact comes from an unlikely source, the humble sweet potato. Native to the Americas, the sweet potato, Ipomoa batatas, was found in Polynesia long before European explorers reached the Pacific. Carbon dating of sweet potato remains found in the Cook Islands dates back to around 1000 CE, suggesting contact between Polynesia and South America at least 500 years before Columbus. The linguistic evidence further supports this connection. The word for sweet potato in early Polynesian languages is kumala, strikingly similar to kumara in some South American dialects spoken in Ecuador. This linguistic parallel is difficult to explain without some form of cultural contact. Dr. Patrick Kurch, Professor Emeritus of Anthropology at the University of California, Berkeley, has extensively studied this sweet potato connection. In his book On the Road of the Winds, An Archaeological History of the Pacific Islands Before European Contact, Kuch argues that the presence of the sweet potato in Polynesia can only be explained by human transport across the Pacific. DNA Evidence of Pre-Columbian Contact Recent genetic studies have provided even more compelling evidence for ancient contact between Polynesia and South America. In 2007, archaeologists discovered chicken bones at an excavation site in Chile. DNA analysis of these bones matched chickens from the Pacific islands of Samoa and Tonga, and carbon dating placed them between 1304 and 1424 CE, predating the arrival of Europeans. A groundbreaking study published in Nature in 2020 provided direct genetic evidence of contact between Polynesian and South American populations. The research, led by Alexander Ioannidis of Stanford University, analyzed genetic data from over 800 individuals from 17 Polynesian islands and 15 Native American groups. The results revealed that some Polynesian populations shared DNA inherited from Native South Americans, specifically from the Zenu people who lived in present-day Colombia. This genetic admixture was dated to around 1150 to 1200 CE, providing strong evidence for pre-Columbian contact. Ancient maps and artifacts suggesting early transoceanic travel. Several ancient maps and artifacts have been discovered that seem to depict knowledge of the Americas long before Columbus. One of the most famous is the Pirie Race map, created by Ottoman admiral and cartographer Pirie Race in 1513. This map shows parts of the South American coastline with remarkable accuracy, despite being created just two decades after Columbus's voyages. The map's accuracy and some of its depictions have led some researchers to suggest that it was based on much older source maps, possibly dating back to ancient times. While this claim is controversial, the Pirie race map remains an intriguing piece of evidence in the debate over pre-Columbian contact. Other artifacts, such as the controversial Fuente Magna Bowl found in Bolivia, which appears to bear inscriptions in a script similar to Sumerian cuneiform, have sparked debates about possible ancient contact between the Old and New Worlds. The Cocaine Mummy Mystery one of the most puzzling pieces of evidence for ancient transoceanic contact comes from an unexpected source, Egyptian mummies. In 1992, a team of German scientists led by Dr. Svetla Balabanova made a startling discovery when analyzing hair samples from Egyptian mummies. 
they found traces of nicotine and cocaine in the samples, substances that were thought to be exclusive to the Americas until Columbus's voyages. The most famous case is that of Rameses II, whose mummy was found to contain significant amounts of nicotine. This finding was later confirmed by French scientists in 1976. Similarly, a female mummy from the Ptolemaic period was found to contain cocaine. These discoveries have sparked intense debate in the scientific community. Some researchers argue that this is evidence of ancient trade routes between Egypt and the Americas, while others suggest possible contamination or the presence of now extinct old world plants that produce similar alkaloids. Dr. John Rick of Stanford University, an expert in pre-Columbian Peru, has stated, we have to be careful about jumping to conclusions, but these findings certainly challenge our understanding of ancient trade networks and cultural contacts. Dr. Alice Roberts, professor of public engagement in science at the University of Birmingham, summarizes the situation well, the more we look, the more evidence we find that suggests our ancestors were far more mobile and interconnected than we once thought. It's an exciting time to be studying human prehistory. Chapter 7, Suppress Knowledge? The discovery of giant skeletons and evidence of ancient transoceanic contact raises an important question, if this evidence exists, why isn't it more widely known or accepted? This chapter explores the controversy surrounding the alleged suppression of archaeological findings that challenge mainstream historical narratives. The Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act in 1990, the United States Congress passed the Native American Graves Protection and Repatriation Act, NAGPRA. This landmark legislation was designed to protect Native American cultural items and human remains, requiring federal agencies and institutions that receive federal funding to return these items to tribes or descendants upon request. While NAGPRA was intended to right historical wrongs and respect Native American cultural heritage, some researchers argue that it has had unintended consequences for archaeological research, particularly when it comes to studying anomalous remains like giant skeletons. Dr. James Chatters, the archaeologist who first studied the ancient Kenuic man remains, has been critical of how NAGPRA has been implemented. In his book Ancient Encounters, Kenuic Man and the First Americans, Chatters argues that the law has sometimes been interpreted in ways that hinder scientific inquiry. Exemptions for the Smithsonian Institution One of the most controversial aspects of NAGPRA is the exemption granted to the Smithsonian Institution. According to United States Code Title 25, Chapter 32, Section 3001, Subsections 4 and 8, the Smithsonian is not considered a federal agency or of museum for the purposes of NAGPRA. This exemption has led to accusations that the Smithsonian has the ability to retain and potentially suppress archaeological evidence that doesn't fit with mainstream historical narratives. Critics point to cases where giant skeletons or other anomalous remains were allegedly sent to the Smithsonian only to disappear from the public record. However, it's important to note that the Smithsonian strongly denies any deliberate suppression of evidence. Dr. David Hunt, a physical anthropologist at the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History, has stated, we don't hide evidence. Our job is to study and preserve the human story, not to conceal it. The debate over missing evidence. Many researchers and authors have claimed that the Smithsonian and other institutions have deliberately hidden or destroyed evidence of giant skeletons and other anomalous findings. These claims often cite newspaper articles from the 19th and early 20th centuries that reported the discovery of giant remains. However, mainstream archaeologists and historians argue that these claims are unfounded. They point out that many of these newspaper reports were likely exaggerated or entirely fabricated, a common practice in the sensationalist yellow journalism of the era. Dr. Kenneth Fedder, a professor of archaeology at Central Connecticut State University and author of Frauds, Myths, and Mysteries, Science and Pseudoscience in Archaeology, has extensively investigated claims of giant skeletons. He argues that there is no credible evidence for a systematic cover-up, stating, if there were really nine-foot skeletons being found, we would have the bones. We don't. Media Portrayal and Criticism of Alternative Theories Another factor contributing to the perception of suppressed knowledge is the way mainstream media and academia often portray alternative historical theories. Researchers who propose ideas that challenge established historical narratives frequently face criticism and ridicule. 
For example, when Graham Hancock's documentary series Ancient Apocalypse was released on Netflix in 2022, it faced harsh criticism from many mainstream archaeologists and media outlets. The Society for American Archaeology issued a statement calling the series pseudoscience and expressing concern that it could mislead the public. Chapter 8 – Recent Discoveries Challenging Mainstream History As we delve deeper into the mysteries of ancient America and the possibility of giant inhabitants, it's crucial to consider recent archaeological discoveries that have dramatically reshaped our understanding of human prehistory. These findings demonstrate that our understanding of the ancient world is far from complete and that we must remain open to new evidence that challenges established narratives. The Isolationist versus Diffusionist Debate in Archaeology For much of the 20th century, the prevailing view in American archaeology was isolationism, the belief that ancient cultures in the Americas developed independently, with little to no contact with other parts of the world. This view was championed by archaeologists like Cyrus Thomas at the Smithsonian Institution. In contrast, diffusionism posits that ideas, technologies, and even people spread between different cultures through migration and trade, even across vast distances. While once dismissed, diffusionist ideas have gained more acceptance in recent years as new evidence has emerged. Dr. Carl Lipo, an archaeologist at Binghamton University, explains, the isolationist versus diffusionist debate has shaped much of American archaeology. But recent discoveries are forcing us to reconsider long-held assumptions about the isolation of ancient American cultures. Gobekli Tepe, Rewriting the History of Civilization One of the most significant archaeological discoveries of the 21st century is Gobekli Tepe, a Neolithic site in southeastern Turkey. Dated to around 10,000 BCE, Gobekli Tepe has fundamentally changed our understanding of the origins of civilization. The site consists of circular structures with intricately carved stone pillars, some weighing up to 20 tons. What makes Gobekli Tepe revolutionary is that it predates the invention of pottery, metallurgy, writing, and even agriculture. It suggests that complex social organization and monumental architecture existed before the development of farming, challenging the long-held belief that agriculture was necessary for the rise of civilization. Dr. Klaus Schmidt, the lead archaeologist at Gobekli Tepe until his death in 2014, described the site as the first human-built holy place. The discovery has forced archaeologists to reconsider the capabilities of hunter-gatherer societies and the origins of religious and social complexity. Bonkuklutala, pushing back the timeline of civilization. Even more recently, excavations at Bonkuklutala, also in Turkey, have uncovered a settlement dating back to over 12,000 years ago. This site, which includes evidence of agriculture, animal husbandry, and sophisticated stone-cutting techniques, pushes back the timeline of organized human settlements even further. Dr. Ergul Kodas, the lead archaeologist at Bonkuklutala, notes, the discoveries here are changing our understanding of Neolithic societies. We're finding evidence of complex social organization, including what appears to be a central religious structure, far earlier than previously thought. The site also includes a sophisticated sewer system, challenging notions of what early human settlements were capable of achieving. These findings suggest that the roots of civilization may extend much further back in time than traditionally believed. Implications for Understanding Ancient Civilizations The discoveries at Gobekli Tepe and Bonkuklutala have profound implications for how we view ancient civilizations, including those in the Americas. They demonstrate that 1. Complex societies can arise without agriculture. This challenges the traditional view that farming was necessary for the development of civilization. 2. Ancient people were more technologically advanced than often assumed. The sophisticated construction techniques at these sites suggest that ancient peoples had capabilities that have been underestimated. 3. The timeline of human civilization may need revision. These sites push back the dates for complex social organization by thousands of years. For religious or spiritual practices may have played a crucial role in early societies, the apparent ritual nature of Gobekli Tepe suggests that shared beliefs may have been a driving force in early social organization. Dr. Jennifer Raff, a geneticist and anthropologist at the University of Kansas, comments, these discoveries remind us that the story of human civilization is far more complex and ancient than we once thought. They should make us receptive to the possibility of similarly revolutionary findings in the Americas. 
we must re-examine our assumptions about ancient American civilizations. If complex societies could arise in the Near East over 12,000 years ago, is it not possible that similar developments could have occurred in the Americas? Recent findings are indeed challenging long-held beliefs about early American cultures. 1. Paisley Caves, Oregon, human coprolites, fossilized feces, found here have been dated to 14,300 years ago, providing some of the earliest evidence of human presence in North America and challenging the Clovis First model. 2. Monteverde, Chile, this site has yielded evidence of human habitation dating back to at least 14,500 years ago, again predating the Clovis culture and suggesting earlier migration to the Americas. 3. Huarca Prieta, Peru, excavations at this coastal site have uncovered sophisticated textiles and evidence of plant cultivation dating back to 15,000 years ago, suggesting complex societies existed in South America far earlier than previously thought. Dr. Tom Dillahay, the archaeologist who excavated Monteverde, notes, these finds are forcing us to rethink the timing and nature of early human migration to the Americas. The picture is far more complex than we once believed. Given these recent revelations, it's clear that our understanding of ancient American civilizations is far from complete. The possibility of discovering evidence of giant humans, advanced ancient technologies, or early transoceanic contact cannot be dismissed out of hand. Dr. Elizabeth Chilton, an archaeologist and provost at Binghamton University, advises, as scientists, we must remain open to new evidence, even when it challenges our existing theories. The history of archaeology is full of surprises, and I expect there are many more to come. Chapter 9, The Four Stages of Suppression In the quest for understanding our ancient past, researchers often encounter resistance when presenting ideas that challenge mainstream narratives. This pattern of response to unconventional ideas in science and media, often referred to as the four stages of suppression. The four stages of suppression, as observed in the treatment of alternative theories in archaeology and other scientific fields, are Criticism Marginalization Attack Censorship These stages represent a progression of responses from the scientific establishment and media to ideas that challenge conventional wisdom. While criticism and peer review are essential parts of the scientific process, the later stages can potentially stifle innovative thinking and important discoveries. Stage 1. Criticism Criticism is a fundamental and necessary part of the scientific process. When new ideas are presented, they should be subjected to rigorous scrutiny and evaluation by peers in the field. This stage is crucial for maintaining scientific integrity and ensuring that new theories are based on solid evidence. Dr. Robert Schock, a geologist known for his controversial theories about the age of the Great Sphinx, explains, criticism is essential in science. It's how we refine our ideas and separate good theories from bad ones. The problem arises when criticism becomes dogmatic and closed-minded. However, in some cases, Criticism can go beyond constructive scientific debate and become dismissive or hostile, particularly when ideas challenge deeply held beliefs or established paradigms. Stage 2. Marginalization If criticism fails to discredit a challenging idea, the next stage often involves attempts to marginalize the researchers or theories. This can take several forms. Labeling. Theories may be dismissed as pseudoscience or fringe, regardless of the evidence presented. Academic ostracism, researchers may find it difficult to publish in mainstream journals or secure funding for their work. Media portrayal, alternative theories may be presented in the media as amusing curiosities rather than serious scientific proposals. Dr. Virginia Steen McIntyre, a geologist who faced significant professional backlash for her dating of the Huitlaco site in Mexico to 250,000 years ago, far older than the accepted timeline for human presence in the Americas, describes her experience, once our findings were published, it was like a curtain was drawn. Colleagues stopped returning calls, and we were effectively shut out of the academic conversation. Stage 3. Attack. If marginalization proves ineffective, critics may resort to more aggressive tactics. This stage often involves personal attacks on the character or credentials of researchers, rather than addressing the merits of their arguments. Common tactics in this stage include Ad hominem attacks, 
discrediting researchers based on personal characteristics rather than their work. Questioning motives, suggesting that researchers are driven by fame or financial gain rather than genuine scientific inquiry. Professional retaliation, researchers may face threats to their career or professional standing. The case of Graham Hancock, author of Fingerprints of the Gods and other books challenging mainstream archaeological narratives, illustrates this stage. Hancock has faced numerous personal attacks, with critics often focusing on his lack of formal archaeological credentials rather than engaging with his actual arguments. Stage 4 is Censorship. The final and most extreme stage of suppression is censorship. This can take various forms. Institutional censorship, universities or research institutions may refuse to host talks or conferences on controversial topics. Media censorship, mainstream media outlets may refuse to cover alternative theories or may present them only in a negative light. Online censorship, social media platforms and search engines may downrank or remove content related to alternative archaeological theories. Self-censorship, researchers may avoid pursuing certain lines of inquiry for fear of professional repercussions. Dr. Robert Bauvel, known for his Orion correlation theory regarding the Giza pyramids, has experienced this firsthand, I've had speaking engagements cancelled at the last minute due to pressure from orthodox Egyptologists. It's a form of academic censorship that stifles debate. Case study, reactions to Graham Hancock's Ancient Apocalypse. The reception of Graham Hancock's Netflix series Ancient Apocalypse provides a clear example of how these stages of suppression can play out in real time. Stage 1, criticism initial reviews of the series were largely critical, with many archaeologists pointing out what they saw as flaws in Hancock's arguments. This level of criticism is normal and expected in scientific discourse. Stage 2, marginalization as the series gained popularity, efforts to marginalize Hancock's ideas intensified. The Society for American Archaeology issued a statement labeling the show as pseudo-archaeology, attempting to distance it from legitimate archaeological inquiry. Stage 3, the tack personal attacks on Hancock increased, with critics focusing on his lack of formal archaeological credentials and accusing him of promoting racist ideas, despite the series not making any claims about race. Stage 4, censorship Some archaeologists called for Netflix to add disclaimers to the series or remove it entirely, representing a push toward censorship of ideas that challenge mainstream narratives. While the intent behind these stages of suppression may be to protect scientific integrity, they can have a chilling effect on innovation and discovery. History is replete with examples of now accepted scientific ideas that were initially dismissed or ridiculed. Dr. Aubrey Marcus, CEO of Onnit and host of the Aubrey Marcus podcast, argues, the suppression of alternative theories doesn't just harm those researchers, it harms science itself. Some of our greatest breakthroughs have come from ideas that were initially considered heretical. Conclusion Embracing the Unknown As we conclude this exploration of America's hidden history, from the possibility of giants to the latest archaeological discoveries, one thing is clear, there is still much to learn about our ancient past. The rapid pace of discovery in fields like archaeology, genetics, and paleoclimatology is constantly reshaping our understanding of human prehistory. What seemed impossible a generation ago is now accepted fact, and today's fringe theories may be tomorrow's textbook material. While we may never find conclusive evidence of a race of giants in ancient America, the search for such evidence has led us to question our assumptions about the past and pushed us to develop new technologies and methodologies for uncovering hidden history. Dr. Elizabeth Chilton offers a fitting conclusion, the greatest danger in archaeology is not in considering unconventional ideas, but in believing we already know all there is to know. Our job as scientists is to follow the evidence wherever it leads, always remaining open to the possibility of surprise and wonder. We must approach the task with open minds, critical thinking, and a willingness to challenge our own assumptions. Only then can we hope to piece together the true story of our shared human heritage in all its complexity and wonder.